blink, 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 uh, Python on hardware time. Okay. So, uh, this week, let's go right to the newsletter. Um, version 150 has been released of the official C++ Raspberry Pi Pico software development kit. Yes. Um, this is Bluetooth related. So why is this a big deal? Because people want to know your opinion about these things. That's right. Well, the Pico W, which is an RP2040 chip that comes with this Cypress like 43439 chip or something, part number. Um, and that module uh, can do um, Wi-Fi. And we've added Wi-Fi support to CircuitPython. There's Wi-Fi now in the SDK, in Arduino, MicroPython, CircuitPython, which is great. And uh, people are like, hey, this chip can also do Bluetooth Classic and Bluetooth Low Energy. And they're like, yeah, yeah, it's coming, it's coming. So, um, so the uh, Raspberry Pi team uh, finally picked the stack and implemented uh, C++ SDK low-level support for the chip. They're using a stack that is not open software, um, but they do have a license. So much like Wi-Fi, it's licensed as long as you're using it with an RP2040 chip. So um, although I don't count me on that for the Bluetooth. I, I know for Wi-Fi it is uh, Bluetooth. I, I don't know if they released an official license yet. Um, and I saw there's a pull request for MicroPython as well. And then I saw uh, Pimeroni did a little demo where it acts as an A2DP endpoint, which is actually interesting because it's Bluetooth Classic, not Bluetooth mm. Energy. So um, we have to dig in to see, you know, what is the support? Uh, when is it going to come to CircuitPython? I really don't know. Um, yeah, this, I, is all, this is all super new. This is really, really new. We have to investigate it. And another thing is we already have Bluetooth support and we would want to have it be um, like cross compatible. So like all the Nordic stuff that you would do, I want to make sure yeah. that as much as possible, you can do the same things, but we're also pretty much going to be not stuck, but we'll have to use the um, stack that they've used um, to make it work um, because porting our own stack, I think is, is going to be a ton of work. So you know, we don't even know what the scope of the work is yet, but it looks like it's coming to MicroPython soon, which is great. We love supporting MicroPython, um, and I hope to all yeah. have it come so, to MicroPython. And someone mentioned this in the chat, and that was a surprising thing. So it's it can do Bluetooth Classic? A2DP is classic, not, um, I yeah. mean, unless I misunderstood the demo, um, I, I don't, I believe that it's it's using yeah. the, so Bluetooth Classic. Yeah, uh, so interface. we're going to double check this and look at it because that's kind of cool if it's true. Yes, HID yes. Classic is um, is uh, is more common for like keyboards. So I think that could be very powerful. Mm. And also H Classic Bluetooth tends to use a, st a standard uh, transport um, called HCI. Well, we'll see. I don't know yet. We haven't even looked. Again, this is like days old, not yeah, even. hours. Um, and then... Uh, before I go to the, the project I wanted you to talk about, um, a lot of things have been going on in the world of open source, Python, CircuitPython, MicroPython, um, but wanted to call attention to KiCad 7.0 releases out. There's some neat stuff that you can do with uh, fonts now. Uh, I said that, yeah, this is separate. This yeah. is the Unicode converter, which I found yeah, on GitHub, cool and I just think it's hilarious. Um, and then uh, check out the rest of the newsletter, because there, there's too much to go over in our uh, Ask an Engineer show, which we're doing right now each week. Um, but it's chock full of everything, and it's doing a fantastic job with it. Uh, Liz is interviewed. Um, there's talks from some events with Python on hardware. Um, there's some really neat Python resources, whether you're doing desktop Python or web Python or embedded Python. But the project of the week out of the newsletter that uh, you found that you were looking at is this uh, really neat computer. It's a complete computer running MicroPython. Yeah, this is from Brian uh, Whitman, who's um, awesome. I mean, I don't know if you remember, we met him. Uh, he's in New York and he's done a lot of cool audio stuff. Um, and he sold uh, a company to Spotify that does um, audio classifications. And he's he's always been doing like really cool um, hardware stuff and audio stuff. I think we met him at um, Dorkbot, which I don't even know if it's Dorkbot. I don't think Dorkbot is a mailing list. I don't know if it's a physical event. I don't think it's a physical event. People should bring yeah. this back. Dorkbots were really cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, so he built this computer based on the ESP32 S3. Uh, I think it's an eight megabyte flash or 16 megabyte flash, eight megabytes PS RAM. So it's like a maxed out module. Um, and the S3 has this ability to drive a TTL display so that you don't get a lot of colors. I think you get a uh, 16 bit color, maybe eight bit color, 12 bit color, um, but it's good enough for this. And I like that he just sort of made it into like an all-in-one computer using the USB 
um, host capability of teeny USB to have it connected to a keyboard, uh, came up from battery. And it's just like, it's an adorable little, you know, kind of Commodore 64 slash Z80 slash. Distraction free. Yeah, it's just like, it's like an all in one little mini computer. And I just think um, he did a really cute job with it. So check it out. Uh, the files are all public and posted. And it has a lot of audio interfaces because, of course, Brian Whitman loves audio stuff. CircuitPython newsletter delivered every single week to your inbox. We do not spam. We do not harvest your email. You have to go to a completely separate site because we want to have nothing to do with your Adafruit store account. Go to adafruitdaily.com and you can get this delivered or you can read on the web. Totally cool. Either way, up to you.